Column chromatography is a purification technique that leverages differences in polarity to separate components of a mixture. In this experiment, we'll be using the cis and trans isomers of azobenzene. They are loaded onto a column containing a polar stationary phase and bind accordingly. A slightly polar mobile phase is added which competes for binding positions on the stationary phase. The mobile phase sometimes wins this competition, pushing the mixture component that is closest in polarity off the column, which we can then collect for analysis. We'll be using a pasteur pipette for the column in this experiment, but it's important that you see that it's not the pipette that's from your drawers. It's a special pipette with thicker walls that you'll get from the stock room. And Ash will show you here, the one on the left is from your drawer, which you will not use. The one on the right is the one we'll be using for this experiment. We need to create a plug that goes in the bottom of our column. The plug prevents the stationary phase from falling out of the column and our plug is made out of glass wool. You'll see Ashley will form it into a tight pellet. Then the plug is placed in the column and stuffed into the nose with the copper rod. Now attach the column to the stand. Now we're going to add about two milliliters of sand to the bottom of our column. You can get it in there by using this whey paper as kind of a funnel. Fill your column two-thirds of the way up with silica gel. You want to leave about an inch worth of space left at the top. And be careful not to spill or inhale any of the silica. Now we'll top the column with about two millimeters of sand. Now let's run through this to understand why we've set it up the way we did. The plug and the sand at the bottom prevent the silica from uh, oozing out the bottom, and then the sand at the top uh, prevents the silica from splashing when you add your mixture. Add your azobenzene mixture to a beaker. Boil off nearly all of your methylene chloride under the hood. Remember that methylene chloride has a low boiling point and you'll need to be careful as you reach low volumes. Okay, we've taken off our methylene chloride uh, and azobenzene solution from the hot plate when there's just a little bit of methylene chloride left. That gives us a highly concentrated solution. Uh, if you've boiled off too much, you can always add a few drops of methylene chloride to reconcentrate it. Now we're ready to start the separation through the column. Uh, we have our concentrated azobenzene mixture on the left there in orange. We have our 99 to 1 hexane and methanol solution. Uh, we have a couple extra beakers down here uh, for our separate collections of the different bands that will come off the column. We need to wet the column before we can run the separation. You do this by completely saturating the column with your solvent. Now add your sample as evenly as possible to the column. The mixture will begin to separate as you continue to add solvent to the column. Once the sample has traveled completely onto the silica gel, you can use a bulb to push each portion of solvent through the column faster. You need to remember to regularly mix your eluent. Once you feel you've collected enough trans isomer, switch collection beakers. We've got our cis isomer about halfway down the column and you can see that the uh, solution below it is very light and so we're mostly getting cis isomer out of the column now. So we're going to switch from our second beaker to our third one. Once you've begun your third collection, it may be a good idea to increase the polarity of the mobile phase by making a solution with a higher concentration of methanol. This will help push off the cis isomer faster. Continue running the column until it is completely flushed of the mixture.
We have two TLC plates here from this experiment. The one on the left is ideally what you will get, where you have the first lane is basically just the trans isomer, the middle lane is about half and half, and the last lane is just the cis isomer. Um, but the separation in this lab isn't perfect, and so sometimes you might see what's on the right, where the first collection you make is more like a half and half. You don't see anything in this second lane, and you can see a, a stronger cis isomer in the farthest lane. When you're finished with your column, you can throw the whole thing in the glass disposal.